This is the Samsung Galaxy F15 5G disassembly. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, the SIM tray needs to be removed. There are no rubber gaskets around the SIM tray. Now heat needs to be applied to the back plate using a hairdryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath and then a pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. I prefer to use a hairdryer since there's less of a chance of overheating the parts inside and damaging them. Here's a look at the plastic back plate. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and prying them off. So you don't need to take apart the phone to replace those. Once the back cover is removed, we can see that the Galaxy M15 is pretty much a rebranded Galaxy F15. Since we can see this flex cable over here says M15 on it. So this flex cable would be the same one using the M15 and F15. So moving on, there are 15 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Now the flex cable for the fingerprint scanner needs to be disconnected from the main board. At this point, a pry tool needs to be placed in between the back housing and the frame of the screen and run along the edges to pop off the catches. There are antenna flex cables on the top and bottom of the back housing. We can also see it says M15 over here, as well as F15 on the bottom. So again, this is gonna be the same part used on the M15 which is used on the F15. On the other side, we can see additional antenna flex cables, as well as graphite film to help transfer heat. The bottom speaker is located on this corner, which is held down with some adhesive. Now that we have access to the battery cable, we'll disconnect that first. At this point, we can proceed to disconnect the rest of the cables. This flex cable connects the main board to the subboard, as well as the screen cable. The red and blue coaxial cable can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding down the main board. Looking at the main board, we can see the 5 megapixel ultra wide lens, the 50 megapixel primary, and the 2 megapixel macro lens. None of the cameras have OIS or optical image stabilization. The LED flash is located here, and the camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off. There are also rubber gaskets around the connectors. I'm not sure why they include the rubber gaskets around the connectors, since there isn't even one on the SIM tray. The SIM and memory card reader is located on the other side, as well as a 13 megapixel front facing camera, a secondary microphone, and below that is an ambient light sensor. There's also a heat transfer tape on the back shield. Once the heat transfer tape has been peeled back, we can see thermal paste on top of the processor. Here's a look with the thermal paste removed. On the frame underneath the motherboard, there's a thermal pad over here and one over here to help transfer heat. And again, we see the M15 marking. To remove the battery, there's a pull pouch provided to help you pry it off.
Here's a 6000 milliamp hour battery. If you needed to replace the screen, you'd have to move the back plate, the screws on the back housing, and then you disconnect the flex cable which is connecting the screen and subboard to the main board. You gently lift up and pry off the flex cable from the subboard. Heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath. Pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive, reapply the new screen making sure you run this flex cable back to the opening in the midframe, and reassemble the phone. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding down the subboard. Looking at the subboard, we can see the charger port, the primary microphone, and the headphone jack. Here's a look at the other side. The vibrator motor is located on the bottom corner, which is held down with some adhesive. To replace that, just heat it up and pry it off. The flex cable for the volume keys is located on this side, which is held down with some adhesive. And the same goes for the earpiece speaker, which is located on top. For anyone who's worried about accidentally puncturing the microphone or the filter for the microphone by inserting the SIM ejector tool in the wrong hole, for this phone you don't need to worry since the filter and microphones are seated above the holes and they won't get damaged. And the one on top of the secondary microphone is blocked off as well. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it an 8.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.